Alright, how's it going everybody? We have a new DC in our midst, in our ranks, joining our army. A new general for Matt Patricia. So, we're going to talk about it today, and uh, of course I'm talking about Corey Undelin. I believe that's how I pronounce his name, because I honestly have never heard of this man in my life before. And uh, I assume you guys haven't either, because that was pretty much the initial reaction from everybody after the news broke that we hired Corey Undelin as the new defensive coordinator for the Detroit Lions. Listen, guys, um, you know, my initial reaction was pretty much like, uh, this is not... Wade Phillips. <laughs> Who is this guy? <laughs> you have a guy like Wade Phillips out there as a defensive coordinator, and uh, you grab a guy that nobody's ever wanted to make a defensive coordinator. <laughs> of course, that's initial reactions, right? Like, I didn't know the guy. I needed to learn about him. And that's, I assume, what you guys are doing right now by clicking on this video. So we're going to jump into some of, we're just going to start off the bat talking about some of his experiences in the league so far. So he goes all the way back to 2004, excuse me, um, when he joined the league. And I'm sure most of you guys have heard this. He joined the league by joining the New England Patriots as a defensive coaching assistant. And of course, that's where he met Matt Patricia. Of course, Matt Patricia can only get guys that are tied to him in New, in New England because it's the New England way, and I get it. But I think I think it goes even deeper than that. But but before we get into that, let's just go into his experiences so far. So he started off in 2004 as a defensive coaching assistant, okay? So low on the ranks of New England, right? After that, I guess, I, I honestly don't know what happened to him. Either he left or he got fired. I, I'm not sure. Um, they parted ways. But uh, he joined the Cleveland Browns soon after that. Uh, in 2005 and 2006, he was a quality control coach. You know, okay, so th three years, he's, he's just, just kind of an assistant coach in the background, not really doing much. But in 2007, he was promoted to the special teams coach, which was, you know, that's pretty cool that he has that kind of experience on his resume as a special teams coach. It just gives him um, a bigger breadth of knowledge, um, and, and it gives him just uh, more experience in general. You know, working on multiple sides of the ball. I think it's an important aspect to becoming a coordinator or a coach. But maybe I'm just reaching because he's our co he's our coordinator now. You know, there's nothing we can do about it. But so 2005, 2006, he was the quality control coach for the Cleveland Browns, and then he was upgraded, promoted to special teams coach, as I said, in 2007. And then in 2008 was his first experience as a defensive backs coach. And it was short-lived <laughs> because in 2009, he was with the Jacksonville Jaguars. And I mean, like, do we blame him for that? No. I mean, the whole Cleveland coaching staff was probably fired, right? <laughs> They're fired every year or so anyway. So, I mean, like, I, I mean, I don't. So after uh, being a D DB coach for the first time in 2008 with the Cleveland Browns, he jumped onto the Jacksonville Jaguars ship and was a defensive assistant there in 2009 so we see that often right anytime a coach or a coaching staff in general gets fired a lot of their assistants get downgraded and and it's easy pickings for other teams to pick them up he spent a few years in jacksonville like i said he was defensive assistant but he was soon promoted back to a db coach they clearly like clearly liked what they saw in him so in 2010 and 2011 he was back to being a defensive backs coach or a secondary coach however you want to call it in 2012, he joined the Denver Broncos as a quality control coach. So again, I mean, it was probably a situation where, and don't, don't, I mean, I didn't do the research, so don't quote me on this. So I apologize if I'm wrong, but like, I, I would be willing to put money that uh, Jacksonville's entire coaching staff probably got fired in 2011, and that's why he ha had to become a quality control coach in 2012 the Denver Broncos but again he was uh, quickly promoted from there and in 2013 and 14 he was back to being a defensive backs coach and then uh, he was picked off by the Eagles and became their defensive backs coach in 2015 and remained with them until now so I see that a lot of people read that and they're like wait hold up uh, the Eagles secondary isn't even good. And, and that was my initial reaction as well. But, you know, so, something that was posted by uh, 
for the Pride of Detroit. Uh, they're a great podcast, great guys. I listen to them all the time. And they said that uh, Philly has not drafted a Pro Bowl defensive back since 2003. So let that sink in for a minute. I mean, like, the Lions, they've put almost no players in the Pro Bowl relative to most teams in the NFL. And yet, you know, we had, um, I believe, Glover Quinn go there one year. And, uh, you know, Darius Slay goes, has, has gone multiple years. And uh, we've had talent on, in our secondary for a while. And now that we just added Justin Coleman, who's one of the best slot corners in the league, and I hope we keep Rashawn Melvin because he was definitely an upgrade from Nevin Lawson. And he's honestly a solid number two defensive back in our backfield. And our safeties, even though we lost some key players, namely Glover Quinn, who I love, and obviously Quandre Diggs in the trade to Seattle, we still have a very good safeties group in our team. And I feel that we have a lot of talent and a lot more talent in our secondary than the Eagles do. But to me, I think that this hire is a little more significant and we need to read into it a little more. Because what does it mean, okay? What does it mean that Patricia hired another guy that he knows, right? Another Pascaloni, if you will, right? Does this mean that we're going to see no change? I don't know if that's if that's true, but that's the message that you're pretty much sending. You're getting a yes man in Detroit as your defensive coordinator. You're pulling a Belichick where you're saying, I pretty much don't need a defensive coordinator. I'll run the defense. And there's even rumors that have been released unsourced rumors so don't don't obviously take these with a huge grain of salt that patricia is going to be calling the defensive plays so he called them a year ago our defense was pretty good and we were missing that offensive um presence that Bre- that bevel ended up bringing in this offseason right so a year ago patricia's first year our defense was pretty pretty stout you know we had some pieces that we needed to fill. Ezekiel Ansa was hurt almost all year. Glover Quinn was aging, and he was he was not playing up to snuff. And uh, I, we had a few other injuries. It was two years ago. I apologize for not remembering. But, you know, our defense played fairly well and a lot really well relative to how they played this past year. And what we were missing was that offense. And we got rid of Jim Bob Cooter, rightfully so, because that guy did not know how to call plays to save his life, right? And now we have Daryl Bevel, who has reinvigorated the offense like we believed he would. Um, we have Bo Scarborough and Carrion Johnson, who we believe can be two, um, you know, one and two running backs. And our offensive line improved significantly. Stafford looked like his old self again, even though he was playing through an injury. He was playing at an MVP level the entire time he was in. That's undebatable. And... Um, now it's looking like our defense took a huge step back. But in reality, right, was it because Patricia stopped calling the plays and he started getting more involved in the offense and special teams and just in general preparation and handed a lot of obligations off to Paul Pascaloni? That's what I believe happened. I don't have any proof, but <laughs> that's what I believe happened because you don't take a significant dive like that, especially when you go out this off season. And you get guys like Trey Flowers and pay him $90 million. And you get guys like Justin Coleman and make him the highest paid slot corner in the league. And you get Rashawn Melvin. And you draft Jelani Tavai in the second round. And you do these things that are going to boost your defense talent-wise. You don't take a nosedive performance-wise, right? So something must have happened in the coaching um, part of things. And obviously, we dealt with injuries. We talked about that at length. Obviously, Matt Stafford went down, and the morale of the team was down because we lost in a BS way against Kansas City. We lost in a BS way against Green Bay. And before that Minnesota game, you know, a couple things could have happened our way, and we could have been undefeated going into that game. By that point, we were already at the point like, wow, all right, our back's already against the wall. And it shouldn't be because we've been performing. And then we got crushed by Minnesota, and then honestly, the morale of the team, the morale of the fan base, everybody was just crushed. Nobody wanted to do anything. Then Stafford went down. Then you know the season's over. Who's playing their heart out when they know their season's over? Nobody. So, to me, we all knew uh, Pascaloni had to go, and uh, it was a big question of, are we even going to get 
a defensive coordinator to begin with, right? Is Patricia just going to take over? So he got a guy that he knew in Corey Underland to come in, you know, and he obviously thinks he's a very talented defensive backs coach. And obviously a lot of teams do because they wouldn't keep promoting him every single time. It's not like this guy had a bunch of clout because of his name and he keep getting jo- kept getting jobs because of, his, because of his name. No, he kept being downgraded after his... In- after after getting released from whatever team he was just with, becoming something like a defensive assistant coach, and then working his way back up to a defensive backs coach, and usually holding on to that until that coaching regime is over. The Eagles ranked higher than us this year in our secondary, and they have nobody. They have no one, no one, no one. If you're counting injuries, they have nobody in their secondary. So it honestly speaks a little bit to his performance as a coach, right? The other thing I wanted to talk about was Matt Patricia knowing that he's on the hot seat this season. See, it would be easy for him to go out and get a big name like Wade Phillips, like I mentioned earlier, which is a guy that I have been pushing for because of his clout and because of his huge, huge, huge resume of experience and Excellent resume of experience, by the way. One of the best defensive coordinators, in my opinion. So I was saying to get somebody like that. But if you're somebody that's on the hot seat, put yourself in Patricia's shoes for a second. I'm not going to pick somebody that goes against me scheme-wise who's going to take a minute for this defense to adjust to their new scheme, and you're putting 100% of your trust and your career in their hands, pretty much. Because, I mean, this is it for Patricia. If he bombs this season, nobody's ever going to hire him as a head coach again. I mean, you can't... The Lions have given him the opportunity. They didn't cut him after two years, and, and, and oh, maybe his, his uh, plan didn't come all the way through. Right, they gave him the chance. They gave him. They're giving him three years now, three full years. And now, like, if he bombs again, three, zero oh and three, zero oh and three, each year that you're a coach, zero oh and three, you're looking worse and worse and worse than than the regime we had with Caldwell. If I was in his shoes and I knew I'm on the hot seat and my career is on the line, I would want to call the defensive plays. I would want to bring in a guy that's going to implement my scheme or a guy that I know can lock down a section of the defense like the defensive backs like the secondary and I can focus on the defensive line and my blitz packages and stuff like that so I understand the hire but it's a little frustrating because it was such a poor performance this year that we want to see something like a big change and that's clearly not going to happen but there's something to look forward to here, and it's it's the fact that he, he has been a DB coach his entire career. And what I mean by that is look at the way that the Lions defense has been this entire season. And and even like look at the criticisms we've gotten. The criticisms we've gotten is why are we playing so much man coverage? Okay. Well, you know, that wasn't a criticism when it was working, right? And the biggest problem that we've been experiencing for why it hasn't been working is that we have an anemic pass rush. Our pass rush is not to be found. MIA. There's no pass rush whatsoever. Quarterbacks have all the time in the world to look downfield, read their reads, throw, complete their complete motion. There is almost no pressure on the quarterback. And obviously, Trey Flowers stepped up a little bit towards the end. He's getting better. You can see from his injury. But that's one shining spot, right? There's, and our linebackers, they've proven, you know, Kennard, obviously, I always talk about this guy, right? He's proven to be a good pass rusher when we blitz. Jared Davis is proven to be a good pass rusher when we blitz. Jelani Tavai is looking like he's a pretty good pass rusher when we blitz. Why are we throwing him into coverage? But what I'm trying to say is, if we're going to continue down this path of Patricia's system, and he wants his DBs to play man coverage all the time, then this is the kind of hire you want, right? You want somebody who's going to elevate 
your defensive backs, who's going to elevate your cornerbacks, your safeties, guys like this that are going to be in severe man coverage all the time, right? So he knew that Corey Underland was a guy that could do that, right? But he knew he couldn't get him as a defensive backs coach. It's very rare that a coach of any position leaves to another team for the same position. So he knew he had to get him by upgrading him to a defensive coordinator. This is obviously Corey Underland's first time as a defensive coordinator, and I think that he will not manage the defense as a traditional defensive coordinator would. I don't think he will. I think Matt Patricia is going to be the de facto defensive coordinator while Corey Underland manages the secondary and really gets those guys prepared and I think that's exactly what Patricia wants he he wants somebody that has a lot of experience studying tape a lot of experience preparing for his opponent and somebody that can clearly he wants somebody that can elevate his defensive backs and if this guy can do that if Corey Underlin can do that then we're gonna have a defense to be reckoned with because let's just go through the defensive line on paper this defensive line is legitimate if snacks harrison becomes healthy he's without a doubt objectively one of the greatest run stuffing defensive tackles of all time that's undebatable and yes he's older yes he had an injury no, we don't know if he's going to come back to normal and be his, his self. But if he does, that's great. Trey Flowers, he's been improving. If he continues to, to do what he's been doing towards the second half of the, of the season, especially towards the last few games, we're going to have somebody that does bring pressure. Deshaun Hand, he was dealing with injuries, torn bicep, and a lot of other stuff. If he turns out to be what he looked like his first season, that's another pass rusher for you. If we start to blitz, use these linebackers correctly because they are not coverage linebackers. If we decide to blitz, those guys can produce pressure. So what I'm saying is if Corey Underland can get these defensive backs in our secondary to perform the way Patricia wants them to in his scheme, and if Patricia can get his pass rushers to put some pressure on the damn quarterback, then we're going to have a defense to reckon with. This defense on paper throughout the talent is there. We know the talent's there. It's a scheme. It's a lot of different variables that they dealt with this season. And I'm excited. (laughs) How can you wake up in the morning? The crack of dawn. How do you wake up at the crack of dawn? Reading a notification and being so disappointed. But then by dusk and by sunset, you're excited again. It's only Lions fans, I'm telling you. Um, But that's all I had for you guys about the coaching. The coaching hire. There's really nothing much to say until we get more news about it. We know that Patricia had to choose very quickly because there, he's going to be coaching the senior bowl and he needs his entire staff there. So we understood that that needed to happen. We knew that Pascaloni had to go. And a lot of people thought that Patricia was going to be the defensive coordinator anyway. So it looks like that's what's going to happen. It looks like hopefully Corey Underland can bring much needed help to Patricia. But hopefully, I, I hope that Patricia does end up calling the plays because I think that we were much better defensively um, the first season that Patricia was here and he was completely focused on the defense. So, yeah, that's what I have to say about that. Um, I didn't even talk about Andrew. So, Andrew, um, look, Andrew couldn't make it today. Uh, I apologize. (laughs) He said, you know, you want to record tomorrow, whatever. I'm like, no, 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 I'm too excited. I need to jump onto YouTube and talk about this coaching hire right now. The people need to hear this. <laughs> but, um, no, that's all we have for you guys today. Um, you know, we we didn't have a show last week. Uh, we honestly weren't going to have one this week because there's no news to talk about. You know, it's very quiet until off-season starts, until things start to happen. 
there's nothing to talk about. And we couldn't jump on here and talk about the Super Bowl or talk about the AFC and NFC championships. There's much more qualified people talking about the Super Bowl and whatnot out there. We're here about the Lions because we are diehard, passionate fans of the Detroit Lions. And we have been there since, you know, we're young guys, but we've been there since 0 16. We were there. So, you know, and a lot of you were too. So, honestly, like, if you're a real Detroit Lions fan, it's a community we're building. We passed the 50 subscriber milestone <laughs> in such a bad season, right? <laughs> Who's listening? <laughs> All right, but seriously, we're a community. So if you want to uh, leave a like button, leave a comment, we really appreciate it. We love to hear from you guys. That's why we're doing this. We, we you know, this is our hobby after work. You know, we, we're both hardworking guys just like you guys. So um, we love to hear you guys' feedback and uh, let us know. Let us know what you guys think about the coaching hire and, uh, Who would you have rather had, or do you think it's okay? And, you know, do you agree with me that do you think that Patricia is pretty much going to be the de facto defensive coordinator, or do you think that, no, this guy, Corey Underland, is going to take over and pretty much be another pass to Colony, and we're just going to have a crap defense again? Or do you think he's going to be really good? Are you you an Eagles fan? You think this guy's wonderful? Let us know. Give us your insight. We don't know. I'm reading stuff off the Internet. I don't know. So thank you um, again. And uh, we love you guys. Um, But one thing I want to say before we go is fingers crossed, prayers to heaven, all of us. We want to pray that the Packers lose. Um, We are all 49ers fans this week. (laughs) For real. We hate those fudge Packers. We hate those Green Bay little Packers. Just get them out of here. Get them out of the news. We don't want to hear them ever again. 